Okay, I think we'll move on. We have a small group, but that's okay. This webinar is being recorded. Sorry for not having my mic microphone on earlier. Um, and before I jump into introducing myself and my co-presenter, I want to go over this Adobe webinar format. So this poll that you completed, there will be a number of polls throughout. This is the relevancy in project-based learning webinar. So we'll talk a lot about work-based learning. It's an hour. It will be recorded. You will have access to the recording and to the presentation after. And, and if you did not register, please add your email into the chat box so that I can make sure you get all the resources. And if you did register, I have your email. So that's great. Um, OK, the Adobe webinar format. On your top bar, there's a little icon man person with their hand raised. And you can use this to interact throughout. If you click the arrow drop down next to the icon of the person with the hand raised, there's other little icons for raising hands, a green check mark for agree, a red X for disagree, a step away symbol, things to communicate to your speakers to either speak louder, softer, speed up, slow down. You can laugh at something that's funny or applaud something you agree with. So let's practice. Um, let's see, did it rain for you today? And if it rained for you, give a little green agree check mark. If it did not rain today for you, give a red disagree. So wherever you're at, did it rain? It rained for one person. Two people. Again, to do the icon, you <laughs> click the little drop down next to the person with the hand raised at the very top bar that you're looking at. And you have multiple icons. Great, it did pour it poured on me. I got soaking wet. Okay, and if you don't know how to do it, that's all right. You can always add add thoughts into the chat. If you have questions, you can add your thoughts too. To clear your icon, so I just clicked the green agree. I just un unclick. If you hover over the icon, it will say clear, whatever it is, clear agree. So you click it one more time to clear it. So I just cleared mine. And if I just click the icon, it automatically does a raised hand. And then if you click it in, again, it clears it. Okay, rain in the morning, but clear in the afternoon. Yes, here too in Napa. Um, we need this rain. We need rain throughout California, don't we? And if you have any questions or comments along the way, please add them into this chat. Both um, Angela and I will be following this chat. So, okay, let's jump in. I'll introduce myself. My name comes up here as Region 3 Technical Assistance Team, but I am Lacey Boatman. It's nice to meet you all. You can see me, but I cannot see you. You can hear me, at least when my microphone is turned on, and I cannot hear you. Um, I'm a program manager here at the Napa County Office of Education in our College and Career Readiness Department. I was a CTE teacher with a lot of experience in project-based learning, um, which brings me to you today. And I am co-presenting with Angela Higdon, who represents our working Okay, something is going on with our technology. Um, Angela's going to come join me and present in here with me. Go old school. Hi, everybody. Um, again, my name is Angela Higdon. I'm a coordinator here in the College and Career Readiness Department at Napa County Office of Ed. Um, my background actually comes from industry primarily, but I've spent the last uh, about six years in education. I was a regional work-based learning coordinator for a six-county educational consortium. 
Um, and kind of my area of expertise has to do with workplace learning and um, industry engagement. Cool. I promise you we did run through this and it worked. I don't know what just happened in the last few minutes, but that's okay. Um, we move on, right? We're flexible. We're, we're in education. So our goals for you are from this webinar are for you to see how work-based learning and project-based learning really go hand in hand and how they tie together. They're not separate. Um, to gain ideas for making your projects more relevant or to help teachers you work with make their projects more relevant. To leave with resources for planning work-based learning into your projects and your curriculum. To see examples of how high quality PBL is relevant, so to see a lot of project examples. And to brainstorm ideas for embedding work-based learning into activities or work-based learning activities into your projects. So this kind of leads to who you all are so that um, we know if we're talking to people who are teachers who are trying to embed work-based learning into your own projects, or if you're administrators who are supporting teachers. So go ahead and complete this poll that popped up on your screen. What is your role? Are you a teacher, administrator, CTE coordinator, counselor, or other? And if you are an other, um, go ahead and type in your role into the chat so we know what you do, and we can target our presentation for you. So we have one teacher, two others, coordinator. People are changing their minds. We are <laughs> in a room with admin and teachers. Okay, cool. So there's other admin and teachers in your room. That's neat. I didn't think to set this up for multiple people. That's smart. Um, and an administrator. Okay. Anyone else? Going once? Going twice? All right. Hiding this away. So then we'll target this for everyone, for admin, support people, coordinators, and teachers. Okay. A couple more polls so that we can get how familiar you are. And for those of you that are in a big group, um, I don't know, I think you can app, answer more than once. And if not, just average out your familiarity. So how familiar, familiar are you with project-based learning? One, not at all familiar, two of five, extremely familiar. And then also, how familiar are you, I cannot talk, with, oh my gosh, here we go, oh, nope, not there yet, with work-based learning. There it is, how familiar are you with work-based learning? Same ranking, one, not at all familiar, two of five, extremely familiar. And this kind of helps guide us too, so we know how much time to spend in the different areas. We have four responses to the PBL question, three responses to the work based learning question, and five participants. <laughs> so we'll give it another minute. See if anybody else wants to respond. Going once, going twice. Okay, well, we will spend more of our time on work-based learning, which is great. Okay, hide these away. Then why are we presenting to you? Why, why is project-based learning and work-based learning important and why are they together? So high-quality project-based learning is extremely relevant and it naturally embeds work-based learning activities. Coming from being a PBL teacher, it, if you're doing high quality PBL, you're naturally embedding work-based learning activities, although you might not be calling it work-based learning activities. And the two of these things go hand to hand. They're not mutually exclusive. If you're trying to embed work-based learning, you can do that by doing high quality project-based learning. Um, and Angela, do you wanna to add to that? Um, I, I think you're right. I think they actually are two that go hand in hand. Um, I think if you're really going to bring that relevancy to your projects, it really takes that industry involvement, which naturally leads into work-based learning. Yeah. And there's a couple of links for you down here if you want more information. And if you click on one of these links, it will open up a web page for you or a tab in another um, web page if you're on one monitor it might take you out of the Adobe Connect platform 
but you do not have to log back in to rejoin. If your screen changes to one of these websites, you just need to go to your toolbar, which for most of us is on our bottom docking station, or you might have yours on the side, and there's the little green Adobe Connect icon. It's a square with like other little squares in it. If you click on that icon, it brings you back into the Adobe Connect platform. You don't need to re-log in. But if you get confused, you can always re-log in and there'll be multiple of you. That's quite all right. If you have any questions, add them to the chat. Okay. So I'm going to briefly, because most of you are more familiar with project-based learning, talk about some of the big players in project-based learning and what they identify as being important to high-quality project-based learning. So this list right here is from a group called HQPBL, High Quality Project-Based Learning. There's a link to their site on the bottom. They are a group that is supported by the Project Management Institute Education Foundation and the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation. They are also sponsored by Buck Institute, which we will talk about, Buck Institute for Education, which we'll look at their, their um, gold standards for PBL in a second. So high quality PBL identifies the important areas for project-based learning to be high quality as intellectual challenge and accomplishment, authenticity, which very much aligns with being relevant and work-based learning, public products also aligns with relevancy and work-based learning, collaboration, which you could align with work-based learning if you're collaborating with industry, but they're speaking more to student collaboration. Anyways, project management and reflection. There's more resources for you. HQPBL is coming out with a framework this month, but it has not been released yet. The six A's of PBL are from New Tech Network, and the ones that identify or align with work-based learning and relevancy, again, are authenticity and adult connections. There are other A's are academic rigor, applied learning, active exploration, and assessment practices. There's a nice six A's project idea rubric for you as a resource if you're interested. Gold standard projects, this list comes from Buck Institute for Education. And again, the authenticity piece very closely aligns with work-based learning. We'll look at that these a little more in depth a little later on. And public products, so these are the same from the high quality PBL list. The other standards for gold standard projects are challenging problem or question, sustained inquiry, student voice and choice, reflection, critique, and revision. There's another resource here for you, a project design elements checklist, but I'm not going to spend too much time on PBL since it seems that um, more time needs to be spent on work-based learning. So bringing it back to you, looking at project-based learning and thinking about project-based learning and relevancy for your setting and for you, either as a teacher or support provider or administrator, how relevant do you think the PBL, the project-based learning is that you are doing as a teacher or that you are seeing on your campus or in your district or county, depending on your role, if you're not a teacher. And I'll pull up a pod for you, or a poll for you um, as you think about your answer. So here you go. This time there's a zero. Zero means you're not doing PBL or you're not seeing any PBL. And then a one is not relevant to a five, extremely relevant. And I'm trying to move this out of the way so you can see the question. So think about, are you seeing authenticity? Are you seeing public products? Are you seeing the adult connections happening? Those all tie in with that relevancy. And we'll talk a bit more about what those what some of these things mean in a little bit. Three responses so far. Four. So most of you are, it's kind of lower, not, not so relevant, which is okay. That's why you're here to grow and to learn and Learn how to make projects more relevant and how to support teachers in making projects more relevant. Give this another few seconds. Going once. 
going twice. Okay, right away. All right. So for more information on project-based learning, since we're not spending a whole lot of time on it, there is a recording of a webinar about project-based learning and the 11 elements of high-quality CTE. There's also a link to the presentation slides. So if you want these things to learn more about PBL, they're here for you, and they will also be available to you at the end of the presentation. Okay, so before we talk more about work-based learning, and we preach to you a bit, we would like to know what you think work-based learning is. This time, no poll. Go ahead and add your thoughts into the chat box, the little chat box here. What do you think work-based learning is? What does it mean to you? What do you think of when you hear work-based learning? And I'm going to do a timer this time, so I will stop talking. Here we go. We'll give you um, two minutes. Think about what work-based learning is, what it means to you, and add your thoughts into the chat. And feel free to respond to other people. Okay, I'll stop talking. Skills and tools used in real life and in workplace investigation, critical thinking, collaboration, absolutely. Learning through real world real world experience like internships. Yeah. Internships is one definitely a, a key component of workplace learning for sure. Real world work experience with an academic component where in students. Yes, Chuck, that's correct where students apply acquired skills to a workplace task. All right, it doesn't look like anyone else is typing, but feel free to add thoughts in as we're talking if you'd like. Hide that away and here we go. Okay, so <clears throat> if you wanted to get very technical, there is a definition of workplace learning in EdCode. Um, I'm not going to bore you by reading this. You can certainly read that yourself. But I think some of the key components to work-based learning is really focusing on the fact that it is an instructional methodology. It uses the workplace. It uses real work to provide students with the knowledge that they need. Um, I think most importantly, it connects to classroom instruction. So it's being able to take that classroom learning and apply it in a real-world environment. Um, and oftentimes, if you're really looking at trying to create a high quality work based learning experience, um, there's an opportunity for students not just to connect what they're learning in a CTE classroom, but really what is the purpose of sitting in that algebra class? Why is English important? So connecting it to the academic classes that they're taking as well. Okay. So when we're talking about quality workplace learning, we're looking at opportunities that are focused on college and career readiness rather than one or the other. I think it's important, you know, for years we've looked at, oh, it's college or career. And we know now that, that really we need to be focusing on both. Um, sequenced and coordinated, somebody mentioned internships. Internships are fantastic, but there's a whole continuum of workplace learning opportunities that can take place up until that. You don't want to be sending students on an internship before they've had the opportunity to experience some lower level workplace learning type experiences like guest speakers, job shadows, those kinds of things. Um, supported by appropriation, appropriate, excuse me, preparation and follow up. For me, this is a really, really big one. 
Um, I think it's super important that we're preparing students before those work-based learning experiences and that we're giving them an opportunity to really reflect on what they saw in that workplace. Um, and again, being able to connect why is writing important? Why is algebra or, or calculus or whatever math class they're taking important? Why, you know, why is what my teacher's telling me important? Um, integrated into the career pathway, there's great work-based learning happening out there that's not connected to a particular pathway. And while that's great to really learn those, those soft skills, if we can connect it to a pathway, it's gonna be that much more relevant for students. And then driven by student outcomes. I think all of us, I know I have done this, where we get very caught up in, we've gotta do these activities, we've gotta do this job shadow, we've gotta bring in a guest speaker, but we're not putting a focus on what do we want our students to learn out of this. And so I think really, if we can sit back and as you're planning work-based learning opportunities, look at outcomes versus activities, it's going to make it that much more relevant for the students. OK, you probably all have seen one form of a work-based learning continuum. There's, there's several out there. Um, this is one that we actually created through looking at several others. But what we did was we took this to make it CTE friendly. So rather than the continuum that goes ninth through 12th grade or eighth through 12th grade, whatever the, the case may be, we looked at, okay, what kinds of work-based learning activities could be happening in an intra-level course? What about concentrator and then capstone? And again, if you follow the continuum, you'll see that some of those experiences are, are building upon the other one. But I think project-based learning in particular and bringing that industry component into project-based learning really is gonna be helpful across your work-based learning continuum, across um, all three or two of your pathway classes, whatever the case may be. And if you click on this, this document on your slide, it opens into the Google Doc format of it, which you can print, copy, modify to your desire. Um, and you'll notice on here, we have actually put some sample student learning outcomes. So, so if you're going to do something like bringing in a guest speaker, what are the outcomes that you're looking for in that? All right, so before we go into the nitty gritty of the crossover between project-based learning and work-based learning, take a minute to pause and reflect on what you've seen so far about high-quality project-based learning and what you've seen about work-based learning, and think about where you think the crossover is. So where do you think the crossover is between project-based learning and work-based learning? and add your thoughts into the chat box. I will put up a timer again. And I'll also add this question into um, a pod so you can see it without me talking.
Okay, so we've got students creating a project based on their work-related experiences, hands-on experience-based learning, both absolutely true. Yep, those are good, good examples. Um, this, we'll talk a little more about how they relate. This document, I'm going to open up to the actual um, PDF, which again, if you click on the image, it will open up to a PDF page, but I'm going to share my screen so I can see the whole thing and look at it with you. Um, I think I'm going to do that at least. <laughs> screen share, share my screen, other monitor. There we go. Okay, so this is the 6A's Project Idea, idea Rubric from New Tech Network. And I chose this one because it has a lot of um, nice ways of looking at what they don't necessarily call it work-based learning, but things that bring relevancy and work-based learning into projects. So if they're looking at the authenticity piece of a project, under the accept acceptable standards, the project simulates real-world activities. Adults are likely to tackle the problem or question addressed by the project. So an example might be um, a branding project or something uh, analyzing and collecting soil in your community. It's, it's something that's real world versus just um, a fake idea. Sorry, I'm looking at somebody who raised their hand. Okay. Um, something that simulates the real world or is actually real world. The exemplary is that it, the entities or persons outside of the school will use the product of student work. So what students are creating is done for a real purpose and lives on. It's not just done for the classroom or to go home on the fridge or in the trash can. It's done for real purple for people done for real people for a real purpose for real reasons. And students will present and defend solution to a real and appropriate audience for the student work. Can I add yes, to yeah, yeah. So one of the examples that I'm, I'm just going to throw out there, and it's, it's actually something that we have a webinar coming up on March 14th about, um, I had an opportunity to meet a teacher who actually is in Texas that has a marketing program. So he, in his marketing program, has actually worked with local business, and his students have become marketing departments for some local businesses. Um, and so their work that they're doing from one year to the next is actually living on in the way these businesses promote themselves. It's website design, it's brochure design, those kinds of things. Great example. Thank you. And I'm going to skip the academic rigor and applied learning and go to active exploration. In the exemplary column, it includes students are required to do field-based or experimental research. Examples are interview experts, survey groups of people, worksite exploration. That is all work-based learning. Do you want to add to that? No? Okay. Under adult connections, the act acceptable column, students have some limited contact with adults, with outside adults. So this is acceptable. This is like in PBL, the acceptable, not above and beyond, but students should be having contact with outside adults. It can be as guest speakers. It can even be parents. Parents are often working, so they're good sources of industry experts. The exemplary column, students have multiple contacts with outside adults who have expertise and experience that can ask questions, provide feedback, and offer advice. This is like a mentor. They're not using work-based learning terms, but it's the same concept. Students have the opportunity to observe and work alongside adults in a work site relevant to the project. This could be a job shadow or an extended job shadow or an internship. Adults, outside adults provide students with a sense of the real world standards for this type of work. Again, that's all work-based learning. And this is what should be happening in high quality project-based learning. And depending on the length of your project, this could be numerous people. This mm -hmm. could be you know, somebody coming in to be a guest speaker, but then somebody else evaluating a project later on down the road or a presentation. So if this is a project that's lasting a, a long period of time, you don't have to be asking the same person to come back over and over again. It could be multiple, um, multiple people. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Under assessment practices, 
find the final product again this is the acceptable final product is a culminating exhibition or presentation that demonstrates their ability to apply the knowledge they have gained so students are presenting in an exhibition type of way where they're demonstrating their knowledge under exemplary students have many opportunities for feedback on their progress from teachers mentors and peers so a culminating exhibition can relate to work-based learning if it's real if you have an authentic audience if it's out in the real world outside of the classroom and even if it's in the classroom just bringing in an authentic audience is part of bringing the relevancy and work-based learning into your classroom that exemplary contact or exemplary section has basically it's mentorship along the way so it's not just at the very end but you have um, industry experts coming in to give feedback to students along the way or mentoring them teaching them guiding them along the way again all work-based learning even though it's not called work-based learning it's embedded into project-based learning and the higher quality of the project-based learning the more work-based learning that's happening okay i'm going back to the presentation And I see that um, Chuck added a comment, PBL students study dynamics of real world adult connections with presentation of findings and work-based learning takes it to the workplace. Yes, a excellent Chuck, thank you. Okay, are there, yes. Well, it, that is true. However, I, I do wanna say work-based learning can definitely take place just through through feedback from a partner. I mean, really, anytime there's an adult connection, you could look at that as a work-based learning activity. Yeah, yeah, there's, and I think we have a section about that. Maybe I'll skip this next one and come back to it. There's a range of work-based learning and relevancy through your projects. Um, the low-hanging fruit, the easiest piece is is like a single contact, which it could be in the form of feedback. Um, one very easy thing to do is just ask people to be project panelists. So if you already have um, your advisory committee, you can email your advisory committee when you're planning your project and you know that final presentation date and ask if anyone can be on your panelists or your panel. As a teacher, what I did was I created my group that I would email for every project I planned. It included advisory committee members. It included the parents of my students and it included parents at our school who volunteered to help. Um, if you don't have an advisory committee, you should if you're CTE, and if you don't, if you, don't you should create one by reaching out to, um, well, we'll Angela will talk more about that, so I'll stop. But you, you create a group of your contacts, email them as soon as you know a presentation date, and ask if anyone can be on the panel for your students. That's easy to do. It, it's not scary, although you might be worried about how well your students present, but the more relevant it is, the better they present. They really do rise to the occasion. And then on the other end of that spectrum, a high quality, a highly relevant, a lot of work-based learning in a project has a project has an authentic context with work-based learning activities embedded throughout so that students have multiple contacts with industry. But you don't have to jump into that highest quality if you're starting from scratch. You can do the low hanging fruit and ask ask just somebody to be on a panel for your students to present to so that they're not just presenting to themselves and you which isn't isn't very relevant so i'm going to go back one and look at um some ideas for making projects more relevant and a lot of these involve work-based learning but some of them aren't technically work-based learning and if you have any additional ideas well i i talked to you about these please feel free to add your ideas to the chat so you can plan your project with an industry partner, or you can have your teachers plan projects with industry partners. This can happen through doing a teacher externship, where teachers go out and do an externship with a business. Part of that externship can involve planning a project, or simply reaching out to somebody in the community, a friend. We'll talk more about making that, that group and planning a project with input from industry. Um, that can make your project more relevant because it's real. Have an industry partner be the client for a project. Angela gave some great examples of that. Give, give your project an authentic context. So we talked a little bit about that and doing those above things can create an authentic context involving real world tasks, tools, and quality standards. Um, making a real impact on the world. Having 
what students create live on. Have business industry people participate as guest speakers during the project. Give opportunities for multiple contacts with adult, adult connections. As mentors, they can come and give feedback, answer questions for students. Industry partners give students feedbacks or drafts on iterations that relates to the bullet point above. Um, give students opportunity to observe and work alongside adults through workplace tours, field trips, job shadows, maybe even an internship. Um, have a culminating event that's authentic with a real audience or at least some adults. Okay, I get excited about this. And before we, before Angela goes into more detail about building that, that um, contact list, let's bring it back to you again. If you've done projects, and I'm going to do this as a poll so that it's anonymous, so you can, you can write whatever you want. I'm going to bring it up really quick. If you've done projects, or if you have teachers doing projects, what are roadblocks you've encountered when trying to embed work-based learning activities? So as you're planning or as you're implementing your projects, your units, what roadblocks do you encounter or have you encountered when trying to embed work-based learning activities? And be brutally honest, this is anonymous. And we'll give a few minutes to respond to this poll. You can type your answer directly in. I'll put another timer up. We'll give two minutes. Look, it kept counting. There we go. Yeah, Heather, I see you raised your hand. Um, if you have a question, go ahead and add it into the chat. You're typing, so I'll let you type. Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Move the text box so you can see the question. There you go. Thank you, Heather. So maybe the person who said I have not done any meaningful projects, if there's any any roadblocks you think that are in your way of doing meaningful projects, maybe what those roadblocks are, or um, maybe what might be difficult for you implementing meaningful projects, if it's planning or time or I mean whatever whatever it might be. And we have what I planned look good on paper, but the end product was disappointing. Um, I wonder if that person might expand a little bit on it. Like, was it that somebody who had set up as a guest speaker came in and was disappointing, or was it was it something else that was disappointing? And then finding industry partners, communication with partners while in classroom all day, initial which relates to time. Initial setup is exhausting, and units taking longer resources, um, like kids driving to internships. If anyone has anything else to add, um, go ahead and add, and I'll let, I'll let Angela take it away. Sometimes difficult to motivate students who are disengaged. OK. So <clears throat> um, I, one of the things I want to address here, finding industry partners, communicating with partners, I, definitely a very common roadblock. Um, we hear it a lot when it comes to work-based learning. And so hopefully one of the things that you can walk away with today is some tools that might make that a little bit easier um, and, and maybe some ideas of, of what we can do. And we can certainly do further conversations around that if you're looking for some more individualized tips on that. 
And the English curriculum, um, I'm going to show a number of example projects, but the New Tech High where I, I taught, all of their English classes are, are uh, their humanities are all related with um, social studies or the freshman class relates to drama and art. But I have a lot, and they don't necessarily relate to CTE, but all of their projects could. Their projects are all very, they're high quality PBL. They incorporate work-based learning, even though they're not all CTE. So I'm happy to share projects with you. But again, we can do that a little more individualized later on towards the end of the presentation. Okay. All right. So the first thing, and, and this will go back maybe to, to one of those earlier roadblocks, um, is where are you going to find these partners? And Lacey talked about the low lying, you know, the low hanging fruit, obviously your advisory committee, um, your parents and husbands, um, you know, alumni are always great. Alumni is particularly powerful because it gives the students an opportunity to really see themselves in that person. And, and so oftentimes there, there's just that connection. Um, I would highly encourage reaching out to any of your business organizations, your chambers, your uh, rotaries, and whenever possible, have a student with you. Have a student talk to them. Um, I've done a number of rotary presentations where we've been able to take students who presented projects that they had worked on or presented project ideas, and that is what's going to motivate those business partners to get involved. They want to hear from the kids. They want to know what the kids need. Um, so again, if, if there's specific thing, roadblocks that you're running into when it comes to making those connections, I'm happy to have a further conversation about that. Um, if there's an industry association attached to your pathway, um, definitely I would, I would be reaching out to them. How much more relevant can you get, um, to then to bring in a member of an industry association? Uh, if you have connections with your local colleges, particularly your local community colleges, if they are running that pa a pathway that yours leads into, um, they oftentimes might be willing to share some, some tips or some advisory board members with you as well. I think what it comes down to is what we call our sphere of influence. And so if you are just starting out with really dipping your toe into that industry um, connection piece, what I would recommend, and we'll provide this, this a blank version of this paper to you, but it sometimes can be helpful just to sit down and look at that inner circle and really think about who do you know? When I was first looking for speakers to come into classrooms or, or people to do presentations, I oftentimes went to my husband and until he just stopped saying yes, <laughs> it got to the point where it was like, okay, you've asked enough. But look at those closest allies and really think about who do you know? Who do you have? Is it a former student? Um, is it a, you know, a friend that's, that's in an industry that's a, that you think that would be particularly interesting? Um, and then branch out from there and never be afraid to ask those. They may not be able to do it, but maybe they know somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and so oftentimes you can make those connections just by saying, I get it. You're busy. Who do you know? Who do you think might be interested in doing that? Mm -hmm. um, industry, for the most part, wants to be involved. They want to be engaged. We're building a pipeline. We're, we're creating these students that are going to be eventually coming into their workforce. But I think oftentimes what happens is two things. One is we get afraid to ask. But the other thing is we have to be able to articulate to our industry partners what is it specifically that we need. Um, and, and so we need to make it easy for them. They want to get involved. They don't always know how. So I would recommend you start with this, something like this first, um, you know, and branch your way out and then start to create a game plan of how you're going to make that, that connection. If you've got workplace learning coordinators or industry intermediaries, um, folks that, that go out and make those industry connections, utilize those people, sit down with them, get them engaged in your project and say, this is where I need help. All right, a um, couple of tools that might make it a little bit easy for, easier for you. Um, the first one, NEPRIS, and I'm not going to open up these links, but you, you're welcome to. Um, NEPRIS is an on, it's, it's, a plat, 
basically a Skype platform in a sense. I think they utilize Zoom. But basically what this allows you to do is to log into the Netverse website. You can look at previous requests, but you have the opportunity to request an industry partner to come into your classroom. Netverse does the recruiting for you. They match you with somebody based on your request. And then that person comes in virtually to your classroom. This is great if you're in a rural community. It's great if you're in a very urban community where traffic is a nightmare. Um, I'm going to be honest, to, to me, Nepris is one of the most valuable but underutilized tools that I've seen when it comes to any kind of industry engagement. Um, and you can, if you, if you just poke around in there, you can look at pre-recorded sessions if you want to. I think anybody can sign up for a free session per year. I, I can't remember how often it is. But if you want to really dive into it, licensing is not super expensive. So I definitely would recommend looking into that. Um, the other thing is the California Workplace Learning Manual. And this is a manual that we actually formed a committee a couple of years ago and looked at what the needs were. What do teachers in particular need to really help make it easier to make these industry connections? And so in that manual, You've got downloadable templates. You've got planning timelines. We've even crafted, there's emails in there. So if you don't want to try to get creative with how you're going to make that request to an industry partner, there's an email template in there for you that you can use. So definitely, I would encourage you to, to take advantage of these tools or at least check them out. Um, you know, it could knock down one of those roadblocks just a little bit. All right, so we're running a little out of time here. Um, and we have more, but we'll uh, breeze through some of it. So what can and what will you do to make your projects more relevant so far from what you've seen? The ideas that we gave for giving projects more relevancy, some of the ideas for embedding work-based learning into your classroom. And yes, please type this into the chat. What can and what will you do to make your projects more relevant? or if you're working with teachers to support teachers in making their projects more relevant. I won't give a full two minutes for this because uh, we're running out of time. <laughs> Seek more partnerships with local industry okay. partners, great. And Carrie, if you wanna bounce ideas around on that or you want any kind of support on that, let me know and I'm happy to help. It's a great place to start, though, because then once you build that contact list, you can contact them for lots. Yes. Good, Chuck. Again, if you need help with that, you know where to find me. Nepris looks like a great resource for my school. It really, okay. it really is. I highly encourage Nepris. Um, and Heather, if you will reach out to me, we might be able to um, provide some help where we might even be able to get you a free license. Actually, anybody on this call, we may be able to secure a license that would take you through June to really give you an opportunity to, to check it out. So as you're planning your projects, this is a document that you can use to plan the projects with a section for planning and ideas for work-based learning. And then to go a little deeper into planning work-based learning, there's some work-based learning specific planning documents that we have for you as well. All right, so this and this document, really when it comes to your, your project-based learning or work-based learning, I think the key is really planning and being very deliberate. And when you, particularly when you're bringing your industry partners in, it's important that you know specifically what it is that you're wanting out of that and what you're expecting out of that. So the work-based learning planning document kind of helps to look at what is the unit I'm teaching, what is the project that I'm working on, and what do I need for that? Who would be a good industry partner for that? And then again, who's gonna make that happen? Is that up to me as the teacher? Is that up to, can I work with my work-based learning coordinators, my industry intermediaries? Um, we've got a couple of different versions of this tool. It, it's really more, it, it's not about the tool. You could do it on a napkin if you wanted to. It's about really looking at your curriculum and saying, where does this fit? 
Here's another version of it. And these are all made available to you. And then the planning calendar can be helpful. Again, where I found this particularly helpful is when you are working with a work-based learning coordinator or um, an industry intermediary. This is super helpful to be able to kind of map out this is where those needs are. And then it's all on one page and you can see it. It might be helpful for just you if you're the sole person that's running this just to know exactly, okay, I, I planned on bringing that guest speaker in in October, and I'd really love to bring somebody in to give some feedback in December. And so then it's up on your wall and you can see it. All right, we have a number of example projects that are really relevant, and I, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on each one because we're running out of time, but you'll have access to this and you can peruse each project and access all of the links that lead to either project planning documents or just further information on the project. Um, this is game design and it was not integrated, but it could be. This could definitely be integrated with English, with history, social science, um, psychology. This was a marketing project with English and graphic, de graphic design. It could ha really have been any English level class. That's just what um, content area happened to participate. Wicked Soap Company was just a chemistry class at High Tech High, but this could incorporate English. It could incorporate a CTE, digital media, or marketing, or business class. I mean, this was a chemistry teacher who made a very relevant project that could really incorporate a number of CTE content areas or other core academics. So really, anyone can do this. Anyone can do great projects, and you can incorporate anyone who's willing to work with you. And there's lots of work-based learning in these as well. This was high school math, biology, and art. No CTE, but could be extremely relevant if a construction program had been involved. If you open up the link, I think they even reflected that they would have liked more support with the actual construction of the birdhouses. Um, this was health and wellness and science and tech. Again, it could incorporate more content areas. There's a lot of, um, this was a very relevant project that could have had more work-based learning embedded in it, and there's ideas for potential work-based learning that could relate to the project. This was a really relevant project with health and wellness and visual arts, and it could have not been um, CTE with fashion design. Students created fashion for a, a real purpose, working with um, real, it was a very cool project. And then here's a link of further example projects where you can search and find things based on keywords or content areas. Okay, we're gonna cut this down to one minute because we're running out of time, but that's okay. Um, we'd like for you to brainstorm ideas for embedding work-based learning activities into your projects that you do. So think of like your favorite project or a project you would like to have more work-based learning in. So this is a little more specific than what you answered before based on a project. And yes, Chuck, all of this stuff is available. Um, you'll have right here all of these links, and you'll have the presentation. But before we do that, take a minute to brainstorm ideas for embedding work-based learning into a specific project that you do or that um, teachers do on your campus. If you have a project you can think of that you know happens, what's work-based learning that could be embedded into it? And while you're typing, you could think of um, maybe a specific guest speaker, a biologist, or um, a job shadow related to it, or having an authentic purpose for the project, like the soap, or fashion wearables for a real purpose. I'm at a loss. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. It'll come to you at three in the morning. Yeah. That's always the way it happens. And if not, we're happy to work with you one on one to walk you through it. We could do like a one on one um, Google Hangout or something to talk through a project idea, maybe, and look at how work based learning could be embedded into it. Happy to support. That's why we're here. Heather, where are you geographically? 
an internship at a motorcycle okay. repair shop. He's thinking about rebuilding a motorcycle. Oh, okay. So you're in awesome. Windsor. Okay. Not too far. Okay. I thought some other people were typing, but we're at 428 and I don't want to hold you guys over. So feel free to type. Well, we pull up the resources. These are all of the resources, and I'm going to give you a link to the presentation. This is a link, if you click on it, to the Google Slides of this presentation. And this last slide has all of the links to the articles and the templates that we shared, so you don't have to go through slide by slide. Um, the exception is all those project links are on those project slides. North Bay Met Academy Big Picture okay. Learning. Okay. And then before we wrap up, if you want to stay on, I want to show though upcoming PD we'll have. There's and this is all on Basecamp. There's upcoming webinars and workshops for you, but we'll stay on for Q and A. If you want to stay on, and as we wrap up in this last minute. If you can add, because people are always asking for more project-based learning and work-based learning support, but we'd love to know what future resources and or co coaching you would like around project-based learning and work-based learning to keep moving your work forward. So Heather, if you want like a one-on-one -on -one meeting to talk through um, embedding work-based learning into your projects, let us know so that we can provide that for you. And check ahead. We've built tables for special needs students and garden projects such as trellises, potting table benches. It's easy to use math design and other standards based learning elements into the project. Thank you, Chuck. Sounds like really relevant projects. I actually have a table that Chuck's class made me in my backyard. It's huge and it's beautiful. And I was a relevant client, <laughs> authentic client. Um, so, okay, we're at 4.30. If you need to head out, thank you so much for joining us. We will send you an email with the recording of the webinar and links to the resources. We appreciate your time. Carrie, um, just to address you, more time talking about how to support our math teachers in project-based learning, work-based learning projects. Reach out to us and we can perhaps set something up. One of the things that we are doing as part of our technical assistance project is a lot more personalized training um, or per, uh, support. So definitely reach out and we'll see exactly what your needs are. Thank you, Chuck. I think you might have a client for a potting table. <laughs> <laughs> when I email everybody, you guys can connect with each other if you want to. Um, all of your emails will be on it. Thank you, Carrie. And we'll stay on if anyone wants to talk right now, if anyone um, wants further support. Oh, look, Heather has a little, how does that happen? I need more time yes. to reflect and try to figure out what I mean. I feel like such an easy, I'm an English teacher and we don't have humanities. Um, yeah, more time for sure. Heather, I can share the resources with you. Even if you don't have humanities, if you don't integrate with anyone, you can still implement the projects on your own. Or you can try to find teachers who are interested in collaborating with you. But if not, if that's not an option for whatever reason, you can still implement these projects on your own. Like we saw that chemistry teacher with that SOAP project, a CTE teacher could have done that project, but it was a chem teacher who decided to, and they didn't, they didn't do it with anyone else. So I'd be happy to share more projects with you um, that you could do on your own. But I also understand it is needing time to sit and reflect and think.
Okay, I'm gonna make okay. a note of that, Heather. Okay. Um, so I think if yeah, if there's no further questions or comments, um, you our contact information is in the presentation. So feel free to reach out, and we're here to help in any way that we can. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Bye. Bye.